Hi, Agra305. This is your first preparatory lecture for uh, chapter one. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me get this in slideshow view. All right. So the importance of genetics, as with any good introductory chapter, you always have to start with the why, like I asked you guys to do with your assignment that is due on Friday. So why are genetics important? And the answer very simply is because genes affect absolutely everything. It can affect our your own unique traits that make you different than your sibling or different than a cousin or a friend or whatever, such as height, weight, air, or eye color, hair color, etc. Genes also um, affect our ability to resist diseases and also um, will affect our ability to either... Uh, express or not express a certain type of disorder. For example, trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome, is a disease that we are going to, or is a disorder that we're going to study pretty in-depthly throughout this class. A second reason of why genetics are going to be important is because um, a lot of the applications of genetic principles that we use today actually have resulted in our ability to create cropping systems. So more specifically, um, the identification of inheritance patterns and uh, interbreeding of plant species and animal species really um, was the first part of genetic improvement in agricultural systems. And those uh, technologies, even though they seem pretty primitive now, they led to the green revolution of the 50s and 60s and to the modern technology that we have today. Finally, um, the pharmaceutical and the medical fields rely heavily on the um, on genetics. Sorry, that went a little too quickly. And um, those those genetics are actually going to be manipulated um, through by or by growing fungi and bacteria that are genetically modica modified and those um, fungi and bacteria are going to be used to produce a lot of different substances such as vaccines um, as well as other substances used in the medical field. So why should you care about genetics? Um, because you're in an agriculture class, I'm hoping that you guys have a little bit of science background and interest. Um, and the, the easy answer for this is because all organisms actually use genetic systems. Um, genetics are the underlying principle of many different theories and disciplines, such as evolution, de developmental biology, taxonomy, ecology, as well as animal behavior. And if those two reasons aren't good enough for you, you need Agra 305 to pat to get your degree. So be like the little graduate dude in the photo there and make sure that you pass this class. So genetic diversity has really evolved over time. And one of the guiding principles is that all organisms have one major thing in common, and that's DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. And DNA is a universal genetic code of which all life on Earth evolved from um, a primordial ancestor. So this is the evolution theory. And this theory um, states that basically this primordial ancestor um, arose between three and a half and four billion years ago. And sorry, my timing is way off on this. Um, and that evolved into all the organisms that we have today. So genetics, like we talked about this morning in class, is split up into three major um, areas or divisions, transmission, molecular, and population. Transmission genetics is classic genetics, so how um, genes get from one generation to the next. Molecular genetics are going to be studying the molecular chemical nature of the gene and how um, that information is coded in the gene um, and replicated and then expressed as protein. And finally, population genetics um, is the statistical analysis of genes. So looking at populations, the incidence of alleles, disease, etc. Model genetic organisms are something that we're going to spend a lot of time studying um, some of these um, founding principles about, specifically when we get to heredity towards the middle part of the semester. But you need to have a good handle on what they are now. So model genetic organisms have um, 
uh, characteristics that make them very useful for genetic analysis. More specifically, they're easily maintained in a lab setting. They're very prolific and can replicate very, very quickly. And those two components are very important for model organisms because in order for us to identify um, different genomes to help fight different diseases, um, we're going to need lots and lots and lots of animals or lots and lots of cells, lots of plants. Um, so these model organisms have been proven to um, replicate very, very quickly. In addition to those two reasons, the model genetic organisms will have their will have had their entire genome sequenced, and we'll talk more about that um, later in the semester. So the six species that you see on this slide are actually um, the major um, model organisms organisms that are used um, throughout multiple disciplines today. So genetics is not a new thing. Some of its earliest applications were um, during the domestication process. So specifically, um, the, the varieties of modern wheat that we have today were really pr um, produced by interbreeding three different types or three different species of wheat. And what we ended up with was a, a wheat seed that had a lot more seed heads on it and were more stable and didn't scatter in the wind. And we slowly got to that point by selecting um, for traits in wheat plants that were more like what we wanted. And so today we have the modern wheat, um, wheat breeds. Another um, incidence of disease that genetics actually has played a role in is identifying individuals that have hemophilia. So the Russian um, royalty, that entire line was actually killed off because they had a um, sex-linked gene for hemophilia that was passed from mother to offspring. And hemophilia, for those of you guys that don't know, is anytime you express or um, experience any type of trauma like a cut or a puncture, the clotting factors in the blood are not there because the gene um, in the DNA is not there to make the clotting factors. So that individual, unfortunately, tends to just bleed out and die. So some of the early um, some of the early incidents of uh, how genes got from one generation to the next back in Aristotle's time was this theory of panogenesis, where um, this concept really um, focused on the brain and the heart having a contribution to the to the cells that were passed on to the next generation. So I want you guys to spend some time in the book um, reading about panogenesis versus the germ plasma theory. And um, just uh, as a um, point of caution, so the germ plasma theory is actually the correct one that we are going with today, not panogenesis, just in case you guys were confused about that. And um, so then we get to the father of genetics, uh, Gregor Mendel, who was a monk. And he discovered the basic principles of heredity, and he did this using pea plants. He was able to identify that certain structures on peas, um, on peas, whether it's the color of their flower or the type of the um, seed coating that they had, wrinkled or smooth, was really... Um, translated from one generation to the next and the the offspring was had a direct result from the parents so we're going to study his work very intensely when we get to chapter three and chapter four and just realize that a lot of Mendel's um work actually led to a variety of uh, the new discovery or the new word discoveries that we know today such as um, cell theory cells the ability to have structures and organelles and then um, Dar and then Darwin's um, publication on the origin of the species that he published in 1856 so um, this kind of brings um, us to the end of chapter one and I want um, just to let you guys know that we're going to um, jump into a quick review of a few things that um, I'm hoping that you know. And those are, first of all, the pr difference between a prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, the different function of organelles in the cell, 
um, how DNA is structured and what is DNA's function, as well as how genes are expressed. So I encourage you to review these four characteristics um, before you take the quiz. And I will see you guys on Wednesday.